Locomotive power work in the depot is an important feature of operating efficiency. The routine work of the shed is just as important as are the periodical inspections, service and general repairs. Every train to time on every day of the week cannot be successfully achieved without the wholehearted cooperation of the men of the motive power depot. Hello and welcome to New Junction. Now this is a bit unusual for me because I, this is going to be the first layout update video that I've done without my own layout. So um, it's a bit odd. Um, hopefully I've, I can film enough content um, to make a video of it for you just to keep you in the loop with what's been going on. Now of course we've all been in lockdown particularly here in the UK and um, elsewhere um, but I've been keeping myself very busy. As you can see in front of me uh, once again, we have the Engage Layout Baron Thorpe, the Hornby Magazine exhibition layout. Um, now, I have stolen it because it needs a bit of TLC. Um, it spent its life in storage recently, so um, it was time it came back out, and I've been um, going through all the rolling stock um, and all the track work and basically giving it a bit of a clean. So, um, and as you can see, we're just getting to the point now where it's starting to run nicely once again. Right. <clears throat> this is a layout update, so we've got loads to come. In fact, I'm going to update you on a few items because because of the scenario with the lockdown, um, I can't actually get the woodwork I need to start uh, the new new junction layout in the garage. So <clears throat> what I have been able to get so far um, is enough timber for the garden railway, which is an O-gauge railway. So um, a bit backwards, but the sun's out, so why not? Um, I'm actually starting um, building the new garden railway uh, layout first. Um, however, don't worry, later on in the uh, episode, I will be showing you the current plans for new junction for this garage. So they'll be worth uh, a look, a bit, little bit of a sneak peek for you. So I received a message from a lady called Sarah, who's got two sons, Henry and Oscar, who apparently have been very well behaved uh, while we're all in lockdown. So and they're big fans of the channel. So I just want to say big hello to you both. Um, keep up the good work and uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. So Lulu, bless her, is ounging to get out into the garden once again and it's a lovely day, so why not? So I'm now gonna take you to the garden where I will show you where I'm up to and the uh, future plans for the Garden Railway. Obviously we're in quite unprecedented territory with the whole lockdown scenario so getting supplies for everyday hobbies is quite difficult. It's one reason why I've started with the garden railway first because I actually need less stuff. So my double O gauge, the new new junction um, layout is currently on hold because I can't get half the stuff I need so um, the bill for that is slightly delayed but I'll uh, <laughs> show you another reason why in a bit because the garage is rather full. So I just wanted to briefly run you through um, what I've actually got so far for the Garden Railway. So if we start, I'm actually going to use the 
uh, fence post method or the meta post method. So I've got myself some 75 mil by 75 mil uh, meta posts. Now these are 600 mil tall, um, and these are what get driven into the ground using the trusty persuader or the uh, giant mallet, um, and they get pushed in very carefully into the ground. Now the idea with these is once they're up to ground level, they keep the above timber out of the soil and out of the moisture. So in theory, your timbers don't rot so quickly. So you should get many years of use out of these. <clears throat> of course, that leads on to the vertical support. The uh, timbers themselves, I've got some 75 by 75 um, treated uh, fence posts. Now, these will be absolutely overkill. They're solid, especially to hold up what is a double track main line for O gauge. So um, these are designed really to hold up four six foot tall fence panels. So <laughs> it's uh, definitely going to last the test of time. And of course, all the wood I mentioned, I will, when it comes around to it, paint it again in fence post, fence paint, I should say. So once you've got the vertical um, support in, you need a horizontal brace to be able to brace the plywood, which will then go on top of that. Um, I'm actually using 50 by 50 timber at this point, so two inch by two inch, and they'll just form um, sort of just over 20 centimeter uh, battens, which will sort of almost form a T, but to the side um, against the 75 mil timber. Now that will go to um, what I've got here, which is 25 mil by 75 mil uh, timbers, which will actually be on their side like that, and they'll just form a sort of rigid base, <coughs> a rigid side, sorry. So as you go around, the whole structure should be very solid. And again, once it's painted up in fence paint, um, and then I will PVA the, the uh, plywood, which will go on top of all of that, and then fence paint that up, and then cover it in roofing felt, um, it should last quite a long time. So all this, there's quite a lot here, but then in reality, it's not a lot, so it was easy to get hold of. Hence why we're starting with the garden railway and the weather's nice, so why not? So in terms of tools of the project, you don't actually need that many. You need the uh, mallet and a hammer just to help guide the uh, posts in nice and neat and plumb. Um, of course, I've got a circular saw to cut up all the timber, so I'm really going to annoy the neighbours. Um, and of course, I've got a trusty drill just to drill it all together and away you go. So um, building work, particularly if you're not too confident, is very simple. Of course, if you're a younger um, viewer, um, make sure you get a an adult to help you with a circular saw, because that could be fun. <laughs> So here we are in the garden. Now, as you can see, it's a fairly long run and I'm going to go uh, in the uh, flower borders with the railway. Now, the railway itself will be uh, divided into three parts, now three big projects. Now, the first part, which will start in front of the patio uh, in the flower beds, it will go around all the way down the garden, loop itself back around, come all the way back up to here. That's probably a 300 foot run. So <clears throat> you can see why I'm breaking it up into uh, parts. The garden also drops off by nearly a metre. So it's going to be quite an engineering project. Should be fairly easy to do, but uh, I wanted to break it up for uh, cost and time purposes and leave me with something that I can have a play with um, in between. So it's not just solid building work. Right, so as I move down through the flower beds, I'm going to take you now to the pond and show you where the railway is going to go. Now, one thing I've already done with these stakes, I've not turned into Buffy the Vampire Slayer as much as it looks. I've actually broken up a pallet and gone through the route which I want to go through the uh, flower bed with. Now you can see they're behind the flower bed currently and you can see the route of the railway. Now it's going to go behind this bush and then as we go towards the, uh, the pond, now I'll try not to fall into the pond as I'm doing this, you can see there's a stake there and uh, the route is going to go straight through this scene which I think with some mild improvement um, from Lulu, I think it'll look rather good. And then uh, it's gonna go straight through there and then towards some trees, which are gonna prove quite interesting to keep the track clean and free for the trains. Right, so just moving on a bit further from the pond, this is the other side of the big tree. Now, it's gotta go by the trunk. Now, being a fern, <laughs> there's gonna be endless bits falling on the track. So, 
I can't hope to go straight through the bottom of it without any protection. So what the, uh, the plan of action is at this stage is to loop some chicken wire over and then cover that with some of the roofing felt from the, uh, the actual plywood top. Um, and that should, and basically you're creating a tunnel and that should protect it from some of the heavy, heavy debris um, and keep the trains on the track so there'll be no damage. Fingers crossed. Right, let's move on a bit to the final hurdle. So the next and last phase of this part of the garden, um, this is where the track is going to loop back round and then go back up on itself. So it will look like a double track main line, however it is going to be a single track loop which will loop on itself. Now <clears throat> the hurdle for this end of the garden is the garden suddenly slopes off almost about a metre. Um, isn't really a problem, it just means the timber uh, supports have to be a bit longer. Um, <clears throat> I was planning on having some sidings here um, just to add a bit more operational interest to the trains and of course as a train, one train leaves um, another one can come back and it gives the impression of an even bigger railway. And just as a quick example this is the start of the garden railway track bed. Now this is wide enough for double track and uh, as you can see the turn is starting to go around there. Now when I've got a bit further I'll show you how I did it and bring it to you in my a small series. But uh, progress while the sun's out and Lulu's having fun as well. Right now, isn't this a treat? Because I don't have a layout um, yet, um, I can do new additions um, in the garden. So <laughs> I'm having fun. Right, so what, I've used, what I'm using is this uh, double O gauge uh, photo diorama. So it's just a, um, a tunnel entrance diorama, which I can use to take photos of, well, new additions that arrived um, to what will be New Junction. So the first one and most exciting one has to be my Class 90 respray from Ben's resprays. Now this was a brand new Backman Class 90 and he's had that for the best part of a month um, and he's uh, resprayed it now. <clears throat> like with most resprays there's always a bit of a, a nerve-wracking wait um, <laughs> while you hope that they, whoever is doing the job gets it right. Now there was a couple of worries because this one in particular 90026 um, when it was first painted had a yellow stripe across its body um, and then has since been just resprayed into this orange one but uh, um, Ben thankfully knew that and did his homework and got the job right now I probably should have messaged him to uh, save myself some sleepless nights but as you can see it's a very very nice um, loco and totally modern totally suits me um, and I don't even think it's running yet but um, I'm sure it's that'll that'll change very soon Next we have some Acura scale PFA flat wagons. Now these, um, well they are being pulled by my class 90 on this diorama, but in reality they're probably, probably more likely to see them with a 66 these days. Um, now I'm going to insert a photo of that now. Um, that's where the Hatton's um, class 66 and as you can see in the sunlight um, they don't have to look really good. Now <clears throat> like with all things Acura scale, quality models, um, relatively cheap and cheerful and you well as there are only short trains in this sort of formation it makes for a nice cheap addition and you've got something else to run around your layout so um i just want to get my track down so i can uh, have a play right <clears throat> along with those i picked up some of the acura scale uh, rory buffer stops now annoyingly i uh, um had these just before i uh, had to dismantle the old layout and I was going to put them on my pilot sidings, but uh, um, that was never to be. So they stay in the box until the day comes where I'll have to add them. I might add them to a diorama just to show everyone what they look like. And, uh, um, well, as buffers go, they're really smart. So well chuffed. So Rails of Sheffield had an offer on recently where they had uh, O-Gage Class 05s. I think they were £175. I think as this video is being recorded, they still are that price and they've got a few um, O gauge items just slashed in prices so if you are tempted to get something um, now's the time to spend a bit of your pocket money now 
The reason I particularly wanted this model was because when I uh, went to drive a Class 03 with Hornby magazine, um, the preservation group also had an 05 in uh, this green livery. So I'm going to renumber this one up and add some uh, um, Digitrain sound, a Paul Chetter sound chip to this and a Stay Alive. And this will be my uh, shunting engine for the Garden Railway. So um, it's nice to uh, have models of the real things I've had first-hand experience with. Now, <clears throat> although your O-Gage friends will tell you it's a tiny, tiny O-Gage engine and not a proper O-Gage engine, just remember that uh, for those of you with N-Gage, now this is an O3, but uh, you can <laughs> really see the difference. So, um, although it's a small O-Gage engine, it's still massive. So here we are coming back into the garage. Now, obviously this is uh, Baron Thorpe once again. Now, a lot of my time has been spent getting the four main lines working, um, which they are just about now. Um, the next area of my, for my attention is gonna be the actual shed part and all the sidings. They'll need a lot of work. As you can imagine, I'm burning through the track magic like you wouldn't believe. This layout itself will be having a big revamp ready for the next um, exhibition circuit it does. Um, so a lot's gonna be changing. Um, and you can see more on that on the next Hornby Magazine update video. So as you can see, Lulu is just trying to find her bed on the floor, which I've unceremoniously moved <laughs> from the usual spot. And going round, of course, you can see the timber uh, for the Garden Railway. So um, once the framework that you saw a snippet of is done, made out of all these posts, I will then cut down the plywood and then glue and paint that seal it in before going outside now because this is all i've been able to get hold of um, this is why new junction has had to take a uh, a pause um, and i've been getting on with the oak age garden railway layout so moving around i'm uh, not going to beat around the bush do you remember when this garage was lovely and neat and tidy now you can see it's full of mess full of tat um, now this is just things <laughs> that i haven't been able to find a home for yet um, as you can see, this, this is a uh, little diorama we're working on with the magazine, with the work. And of course, my uh, trusty steed, which hasn't been out in a while, a bit neglected. And then uh, if I uh, pan you around above the license plate, you can see what's left of the wood that I've managed to save from New Junction, the original one. Now, <clears throat> the bulk of that is the O-gauge section and then all the beams. So that brings me nicely on to the New Junction plans. So what tends to be a problem when planning any tail chaser layout, that's a circular layout, is the door and how do you get into the room, into the middle of the layout. Well, as I'm going to show you now through some wizardry on the screen now is how far I've got with SCARM. And now I've decided to have two helixes, as you can see. So the big square parts of the boards um, are going to be either side of the door. So there's going to be one here and then one here, leaving an access route straight through the middle. Um, and yes, you can tell <laughs> that's going to be some epic sidings because I'm uh, going to have two levels. Now, <clears throat> storage was always an issue on the last layout, so it's about time I got a bit of storage on the new one. So as mentioned, it's very early days. Um, the plans haven't been really looked through. I'm just sort of playing around, but that's the uh, general gist I'm going to go down. But as you can see, the garage needs a bit of a tidy up. Um, poor Lulu, I've bored her to death doing this update. Hopefully I've not bored you lot to death, but um, <laughs> it's all part of the fun. And as you can see, I've got to tidy up the garage once again. I'm sure it was empty a minute ago. Whew. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. It has been a bit around the houses. Um, now, as you saw briefly, the garden railway has started and uh, I'm aiming to do about five meters a day. So while the rains hold off, um, of course I've got a day job in between. So. Um, um, that should come together very quickly. And as soon as it does, <clears throat> we'll get Baron Thorpe out of the way. The rest of the wood for the garden railway will be in the garden. 
and uh, we can make a start on the uh, new junction. So, as ever guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys.